everybody. Good to see all of you that are here on this morning. We are about three minutes away from us starting our services for the day, so we want to welcome you to the uh, live streaming, but more than anything else, we want to welcome you to worship God. So as we said it before, our hope is that you are, if you're not in bed, please don't be in bed. Get up, wash your face, comb your hair, brush your teeth. <laughs> do everything that you need to do that you would do when you go to worship. Uh, because God actually, he absolutely deserves our, our best. He deserves excellence. Um, he deserves the worthiness that uh, he uh, desires of us. So I'm asking you to uh, prepare your hearts again for uh, worship. After the sermon today, we're all going to share in our Lord's table. So I did ask you to uh, have whatever it is that you're going to have. Have it prepared. Uh, to have before you for your families. Again, those of you are head of household are going to be administering that Lord's Supper or that yeah, the Lord's Supper to your families. However you choose to do it, we're all going to give directions as we normally do. Uh, try to eat and drink all at the same time as much as possible. So just again, let's just acclimate ourselves to what God is allowing us, just this wonderful opportunity to worship him and praise him in a, in a different kind of way, in a different setting, in a different kind of circumstance. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change the fact that he deserves our worship uh, and he honestly, honest, honestly deserves our praise. So uh, right at 10 o'clock, Warren is going to kick us off in a song. Uh, we have our brothers that are going to be leading us today. Uh, it is our pleasure to uh, have Pastor Philip Johnson of the Pill of Truth Church with us uh, sharing on today. Pastor Tim Johnson, uh, Warren is here, as we always know. Deacon Fandris Edward, we finally got him back in church. I know he's happy. Ken Turner, uh, Brother Johnson, who's playing guitar for us. Um, we got Damon, who's sharing with us. So uh, we just decided today just to kind of give it a little different flavor in terms of what we used to do. What we're usually doing is just our brothers that are gathered here today, our uh, producers and directors, of course, are Zacchaeus and Stefan. They are doing their part to get this over to you, and we pray that you will again join in and worship. Praise with my mind, praise with my time, praise with us. 
gonna praise you. the world, 
we say to you this morning, Lord, Hosanna, come now, Lord. We need you because we understand that there's none like you. There's none so righteous. There's none so holy. There's none so loving and there's none so kind. So we need you to come now, Lord, our voices, as we clap our hands, as we pat our feet, as we rejoice in you this morning, Lord. We pray now, come, Lord. We want you to have your way in our lives. Because we know you're going to do it anyway. So, Master, we, let the, we pray that our will will align with your will, that we would worship you in this day in spirit and in truth. Because, Master, you're worthy of all worship, honor, and glory. We've done nothing to deserve to be here today. Not that we've been good, nor that we look good, but because of your grace and your mercy, we're in this place this day. So, Master, we thank you now. We pray that our worship this day would be pleasing to you, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils, that you would get glory, honor, and praise in everything we say and do, in everywhere that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Holy One, righteous King, worthy is the Lamb, you are the Holy One. Holy One, righteous King, righteous King, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, you are. You are the Holy One. Come on, it's all right to praise Him right now. The King of Kings. King of Kings. You're the Lord, Lord of Lords. Oh, you're the Son of God. God.
let's just praise him this way. Holy, holy one, my Savior and my King, King of Kings. who you are help fellas oh, oh, holy, holy 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 one lord that's who you are i save you Sunday morning with all power. You're holy. Holy. Holy one. Holy one. Come on, if you haven't praised him, this is the last time. You are our Savior. Savior. The King. King of kings, oh, you are the holy one. You are the holy one. No, 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 nobody like like you, Lord. You are. You are the holy one. No, no, nobody like you, Lord. You are. You are the holy one. No, 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 no. Yes, Lord. Yes. If our if our babies are listening, if they're not, if you would at this for this moment, just kind of bring them in front of you. There's a little song that we have uh, with our babies in mind that just reminds us of the joy that we ought to have as it relates to Jesus. Down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got that joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart, down in my heart, do you stay? I got that joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart, down in. Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace, I've got the peace, peace that passes understanding. Down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding. Down in my heart, down in my heart. To stay, I've got the peace that passes understanding. Down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got the peace that passes understand. Down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love, I got the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. Love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy. And I'm so happy.
happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Yes, <laughs> I got the love of Jesus yeah. in my heart. Yeah. Well, you know we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta close old school quartet. Last song that God has given us for this hour, we're gonna hear again from our old brother Edward at this time. Talk to 
the Lord. He is able to solve your problem. There is none like Jesus. He made a way. I know he did. He made a way. He made a way. One day. He's a way. Yeah. One day. He's a way. Yeah. One day. 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 He made a way. He made a way. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. Pastor Johnson, would you, you lead us in a moment of intercessory prayer? We know what's happening in our nation, what's happening in our world. And we just go to God in prayer before we hear a word from the Lord. God, how excellent is your name yeah. in all the earth. Yeah. And all, in this case, does mean all. Yes, Lord. The sum total of the geography and typography, the sum total of where mankind exists, yes, Lord. where he lives, where he breeds, yes, Lord. and where he has his well-being. We know that we are in unprecedented times. Yes, Lord. We know that we are in times that are unique, times that we've never experienced before, hmm. times that are historical, Yes, Lord. Times that have no precedent. <laughs> but yet we're reminded that you are the great I am. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that implies that you always are, always was, and always will be. Yes, Lord. Therefore, time is no factor to you. <laughs> you Ordain time, you orchestrate time, oh. and you order. So with that being the case, you are not limited that we as humans are undergoing. You're not a God who is a deist who sits on high and allows the universe to function as some mechanical object. You're not a God that is unconcerned, who is uncaring, who is callous. Yes. You're not a God that is uninvolved. You're not a God that is developing a contingency to thwart off the times that we're facing. Well, the fact of the matter is you are God and God alone and you yeah, ordain and orchestrate yeah. all that was, is, and there shall be. Yes, Lord. You are the sovereign God. Thank you, God. Thank Yet, Father, your people are experiencing things that we have never experienced before. In fact, the fact of the matter, some of us are fearful. Some of us are dreading the moments that we are currently facing. Well, even as I speak, some of us have lost loved ones. Even as I speak, some of us are in the process of losing loved ones. But you are God, and we come to you with humility. But at the same time, we come to you with obedience. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. We also come to you with gratitude. Yeah. Yes. As we count it all joy, as we are encountering this trial, knowing that the testing of our faith and our is distinct and that it applies only to those who have faith in your son Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. Produces endurance. Yes, Lord. And you want that endurance to have its perfect result. Please, so that we would be perfected by this whole process. So, Lord, we're just asking you to continue to do what you've always done. <laughs> we pray, Father, that the faith that you've given those who believe that you would undergird that faith, that they would know that you are in control, that we should take no thought for what we shall eat or drink, but we should still seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you promised us through all these trials and tribulations that all these things would be added unto us. So I pray for your church, the church of Jesus Christ, the pillar and ground of truth, that you will continue to undergird us and that we will grow 
through your grace and your knowledge through the process. And then even during this time that we would see it as an opportunity to make the world know that there is a God who sent the Son to die for the sins of those that are in the world. And that this Jesus is still seeking to save those that are lost. Yes, Lord. So I pray for all of our pastors, yes, Lord. all of our elders yes, Lord. that are leading congregations across the world. Yes, Lord. Father, we need a special wisdom during these yes, times. Yes, Lord. And we pray, God, that you give it to us yes, as we implement different methods of worship so that your people could stay connected in fellowship. Yes, Lord. I pray, Father, that we don't result to worldliness. But realize and recognize the answer is in the book that is your word. Yes, Lord. That your word can equip us for all these things. So as we're about to hear your word, yes, Lord. Ready to preach her. Ready those that are preached to. Yes, Lord. So that we would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is my prayer in the name of the Lamb that was slain. <laughs> Before the world's foundation. Yeah. And in real time, his name is Jesus. Yes, Lord. And we say amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Johnson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would that you would turn in your Bibles to John. To Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 our consideration for this day. Luke chapter number 22 is where we will find the word of God that he will speak to us on today. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Amen. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say, hey, hello, pastor. All right, all right. Luke chapter 22, and I just, again, just for our edification, I think it's important that we read up to verse 20 for us to get the context setting of what Jesus is teaching us on this morning. Now, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called Passover. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. And Satan entered Judah, surnamed Iscariot, whose numbered among who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he said, Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. And you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room there make ready. So when they went and found it just as he had said, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire or with earnest desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. I just want to title this text today, From His Last Supper to the Lord's Supper. From His Last Supper to the Lord's Supper. The grass withered and the flower faded thereof, 
but the word of our God shall stand forever. You know, one of the joys that I had coming up as a young man, I was around people who loved to tell stories, around people that could just give wonderful narratives and share stories that were common to the people of that day and that time. So I grew up enjoying and appreciating stories or narratives. And I think most of us, most of us enjoy a good story. Most of us enjoy a good narrative. That's one of the reasons that television becomes so popular for us is because there are a lot of narratives. There are a lot of stories that are being told that there are the issues of the hero. There's the villain. There's always somebody that's doing the right thing and somebody that's doing the wrong thing. There's always an issue of somebody that needs to be rescued. There's somebody that is hurt in pain. There's somebody that is going through a sorrowful situation. There's somebody that is on the verge of death, and sometimes they recover from those things. And so those narratives mean something to us. There are sometimes there are things that end in tragic uh, and tragedy, but they are narratives, and we love stories. And I tell you, the greatest story that I love is his story. Yeah. It's, it's God's story, and that story more than anything else centers around the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a story. What a story. What a narrative. What, <clears throat> what a history for us to look at in terms of God, how he unveils and how he progressively reveals to us his love and his grace and his mercy and his kindness, and he allows it to all be fulfilled in that one that he said, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, today we are right on the, on the brink of embarking upon the greatest, the greatest day, the greatest event in the history of humanity. It's great for two reasons, because one, on the one hand, it proved how evil humanity is, that humanity, Dr. Leaf would say, was so evil that if given the chance, he would kill God. But on the other hand, it proves the love and the mercy of God, that God loved you and I so much that he gave the greatest gift that could possibly be given to us, and that is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so when we look at this particular text today, we find our Lord, who had always come not to break the law, but to fulfill the law. The text says, he helps us to understand, now when we look at the feast or the uh, feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover, that is a reminder to us that at this time, that Jesus is at his last supper, and at his last supper, listen to this, the one that had healed the sick, the one that had raised the dead, the one that had given sight to the blind, the one that had caused lame people to walk, those that could not talk were able to talk, the one that had cast out demons, the one that had fed 5,000 with two little fish and five barley loaves, the one that had walked on water, the one that had spoken to the storm and said, peace be still, the one that had raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, raised Lazarus from the dead, raised the widow of sons, named son on the way to the gravesite, raised him from the dead. The Bible says that that, that particular time that they were preparing for the feast of the Passover at his last supper, the Jews conspired for Jesus' death. I just want you to see that while, while Jesus is celebrating the deliverance of Israel, on the other hand, the Jews, the church, no, 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 the religious folk, the, the, the ecclesia of that time, that assembly of that time, they, they were gathering to conspire against Jesus. Notice, notice what, what Jesus is doing. It literally setting up in, in Exodus chapter 12 when he set up the, 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 the Passover. He said that they were to set up that Passover, first of all, to get a lamb on the 10th day of the first month of the year. Exodus chapter 12. And now they were to cho choose that lamb and all they were doing were obeying the word of God that God had given all of the men that could in that time. They would always come back to Jerusalem for three feasts. And this was the first of the feasts according to Exodus 23 verse 14. They were to come back to the feast and that this feast was celebration and commemoration of the Passover. But while they're celebrating deliverance, the Jews are conspiring death. 
Notice again what the text says. Why, why were they conspiring death? They were sinful men. Notice the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. And of course, why would they do that? You remember, you remember what God said about humanity in Genesis chapter 6, 4. He says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was evil continually. Listen, you got to understand, even after God got rid of everybody and allowed eight people to survive the flood, even after the flood, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21, the Lord said the same thing. The Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth so what he's saying why would folk who saw the messiah do what he did why would they conspire to kill him they were evil they were sinful men not only was sinful men involved but satan was involved notice that verse three it says then satan entered judas name is Scariot, who was numbered among the 12. Satan was involved in this conspiracy. Satan was involved in, in, in what transpired for the death of Jesus. And you got to remember John chapter 10, Jesus ain't nobody taking my life. I lay it down. I got the right to pick it up again. But what God is showing is that he can use anybody and everybody he wants ultimately to fulfill his purpose. And Satan Sinful men, when you get sinful men and Satan mixed up, boy, you really got a mess on your hand. And so now they're conspiring to kill Jesus. Not only do you have sinful men and Satan, but you got a so-called, you got a so-called disciple. So-called disciple. Notice again what the word says. So he went his way, he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray them. And they were glad and agreed with him money to give him money so he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude isn't that something they 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 were they were bold enough to want to kill jesus but they were scared of the people i tell you sin make you do some crazy stuff sin make you do things that just are abnormal sin make you do things that just doesn't make any sense so here they are at the moment that they're celebrating deliverance they're conspiring for the death of jesus at the Last Supper, at the Last Supper, the Jews conspired for Jesus' death. But at the Last Supper, Jesus commemorated Israel's deliverance. Notice, notice the preparation in verse number 7. It says, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. That was according to Exodus chapter 12, verse 6. That was now on the 14th day of the month, the first month of their, their national year. It says, and he sent Peter and John saying, go, prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they said to him, what do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, I think that is just amazing. I keep saying every time we read the scripture, don't we ever read the scripture like we think this is stuff we see every day? Jesus is uniquely showing that he, ha he is ambitious. He is showing that he is in control of everything. Because understand, you had thousands of people who were coming to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Passover. He says to his disciples, Lord, where do you want us? Where do you want us to prepare the Passover? Jesus said, when you get in the city, you're going to see a man carrying a pitcher. Now, somebody look at that and say, Man, that, that's kind of, that's not really anything unusual. But in that time, for the most part, you, if you look at customs and traditions, it was normally the women that carried the water. But because there were so many people that were there, here's this man carrying a pitcher of water, and they didn't have to hide to try to identify for very long. Why? Because Jesus was showing that even though there was a conspiracy against him, even though he knew he was about to die, he was still in control of a whole situation. Even to the detail of that man that would be carrying a pitcher of water. Somebody ought to shout in here. Shows that he was in control of everything. Verse 11 says, and then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Notice what he says. Then he will show you a large room, furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it just as he said, and they prepared the Passover. They prepared the Passover. In other words, now he goes from preparation. Now he's getting ready for presentation. Because the idea now, when you read in Exodus 12, because Jesus followed the law to its fullest extent. 
He is now in the upper room, and he is doing everything that God told Moses to tell the people to do the night that Israel was delivered from the bondage of Egypt. And so they are now sharing in the Lord's table. So he goes from present or preparation to presentation. Look at verse 14. And when the hour had come, he sat down. He sat down. He sat down and the 12 with the 12 apostles with him. Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12 in verse 7 through 8. He reminds them now that they were to prepare it a certain way. They were to have bitter herbs that they would eat it with. They would have bread that didn't have yeast in it. It was unleavened bread. And the reason that they had to do it that way is because they were getting ready to hurry up to get out of Egypt. You remember that already been nine plagues that the Lord had allowed to come, but now he was dealing with that last plague. Some of y'all saw that last night on channel 13. He, he was dealing with that last plague whereby now all of the firstborn that didn't have the blood on the lintel and the doorposts of the house. All of those that had the blood on the lintel and the doorposts of the house, God say, I'm going to allow my angel to come through. But, but as that angel is coming through every house that got blood on the lintel and the doorpost, I'm going to say to the angel, pass over. Because that house has now been protected because they have obeyed the word to put blood on the lintel and the doorpost of the house. They were now celebrating the Passover. They, 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 they roasted it, y'all. That, they, they roasted it. They didn't boil it. They didn't bake it. They... They, they roasted it, and they had to roast the whole lamb. The whole lamb had to be roasted, and it had to be a lamb large enough for everybody that was in the house to have enough to eat. They couldn't even, even, even leave any leftover that if it were some leftover, they had to burn it because they were getting ready to exit out of Egypt. They had been in bondage for 430 years. They had been under the whip of Pharaoh for a long time. They had to make brick without mortar. And now God was providing them their deliverance. But they were delivered by the covering of the blood. Can I get a witness in here? The lamb's blood was what covered and protected them from the death angel. And so notice now, what was, what was the purpose for that? I'm glad you asked. Exodus chapter 12, listen, verse 12, it says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague. Notice that language. And the plague. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, I know somebody getting excited right now. Somebody saying praise the Lord right now. So watch this. So this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting covenant. That's important. That's important. So now what is Jesus doing? He is commemorating. He's remembering. He's celebrating just like any Jew would. The deliverance of Egypt, uh, of Israel out of Egypt because it was a symbol of freedom. It was a symbol that they were no longer under bondage. So now, now notice he at his last supper, the Jews conspired for Jesus' death. At the last supper, Jesus commemorated Israel's deliverance. But here's the final thing. In his Lord's Supper, he commits his personal deliverance. His personal deliverance. Notice what happens in verse number 19. But we're about, we're about done. Look at verse number 19. I love this verse because that's where we always go anytime we talk about the Lord's table. He says, and he took bread. And he took bread. And he took bread. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Now, now notice, what he does in verse 
19 through 20 is different than what he did in verse 14 through 18. In verse 14 through 18, he was still commemorating what God had done for Israel. Notice again. Notice again. But, but there's, a, there's a cue that he puts in there. There's a little clue that he puts in there in verse 4, 15 and 16. If you back up with me just for a moment. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, with earnest desire, I've desired to eat this Passover with before I suffer. This is the last one. This is the final one. Because, because after this one, I have to suffer. After this one, I, I, I have to be turned over to the hand of the Jews. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna march me from hall to hall. They, they, they're going to they're gonna misuse me. They're going to persecute me. They, they're going to crucify me, but on, on the third day. How, how do I know there's a clue about the third day? Notice what he says. Until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He is giving a preview that I'm going to suffer. But I want you to know my suffering is not going to end in annihilation. My suffering is going to lead to further deliverance in, in the kingdom. I'll drink it with you again. Brothers, they had to be excited. They, 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 but but they, they just didn't fully get it. But thank God right now, those of us that already know the story, we see the cue. We see the clue. He said to them, take, divide it up. He says it again in verse 18. I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He was talking about that, that, that day, y'all, that we ought to all anticipate. Pastor said, Lord, come. Hosanna in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Lord. Come. We're looking forward to that day. I don't know, I don't know about y'all, and I, I know some of y'all still get, get a little excited and a little anxious every time I say that. I'm saying it every day. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah. When I, when I look at the fact that I can, I could leave my house and I could be exposed to somebody and come back to my house and literally be a death sentence for my wife. I'm saying, Lord, come back. When I recognize that every touch of my granddaughter could be the last touch, I'm saying, Lord, come. When I recognize when I meet jam and tea, I'm reckon it could be the last day that I meet them. I'm saying, Lord, come, because I know until you come, suffering still going to be a reality. Until you come, pain is still going to be a reality. Until you come, the problems are still going to be a reality. But Jesus said, I'm about to close at verse 19. He says, I, I, this, this, this is my body. Notice how it's personal now. Because the lamb that they had just commemorated, the lamb that they had just commemorated was a lamb that had been born for the purpose of everybody in that house. What y'all want y'all think about this? Dr. Ari Williams used to say it this way. He said it this way when you think about it, when Adam, when Adam rebelled against God, with the sin problem of humanity, he, he, didn't, he didn't call on bad, bad black sheep, have you any wool? He didn't talk about Mary's little lamb that went to school. No, no, no. He said there's only one lamb that could handle this problem, and that would be what the lamb of God. That's why Jesus says. I give my body. It's my body. Somebody need to get that. I'm giving up my body. What is that showing us? That there had to be a substitution. Can I get some, somebody to agree with me today? Whether you look at live stream, you ought to wave your hand. Thank God that Jesus was our substitution. Because we could, not, we could not have died for our own sin. Jesus became our substitution. He gave his body, he says, which is given for you. You got to understand, every lamb that ever died didn't die for itself. Every lamb that ever died, died for the sin of somebody else. Every lamb that ever died, they died as a substitute for somebody else. And here's the final thing in verse, verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So not only is there substitution, 
but there's also atonement. Oh, thank God for the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Because man's sin was so, so, so evil, so egregious, so deformed, so defiant in the face of God that God himself had to come up with the solution for our sins. And I think about what John said, he's baptizing in the river Jordan. I can't help but think as John, John looked up. John said, behold, ooh, Lord, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But, but, but notice what Jesus said, the new covenant in my blood. I, I love Jesus' holy audacity because you understand that a covenant a testament, a will is long, is only in force when, yes, somebody dies. But, but oh, you talk about some holy audacity that right in the middle, Jesus, yes, uh, he, he removes himself from the Last Supper and then he initiates what we call the Lord's Supper. Because he says it's a new covenant, it's a new plan, it's a new promise. In, in other words, how, how, Lord, can you, can you start a new covenant when, yes, no one has died? Well understand, in the mind of the Father, the Son had already been slain before the foundation of the world. So God didn't need to wait until somebody died for the new covenant to be in effect. He could only, he could now establish a new covenant because Jesus was actually God. How do I know he was God? John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So now God is the one that initiates every covenant, but he has to do it with blood. So now Jesus is saying, with my blood, I establish a new covenant. Well, I back up when I say this. I know somebody got excited when you heard me say uh, that Israel uh, was covered by the blood of the lamb uh, on the doorposts uh, and the lintels of the house. But if you shouted there, that was the wrong time to shout uh, because that was only for Israel. You had to be circumcised. Uh, it was only for Israel. Uh, but right now is the time uh, you ought to give God the praise uh, because what can wash away our sins? Uh, nothing uh, but the blood of Jesus. Uh, what can make uh, us whole again nothing but uh, the blood of jesus oh how precious is the flow that'll make us uh, white as snow no other help we know is nothing nothing but the blood of jesus anybody here glad today uh, that you find yourself uh, under his blood i close when i tell you i gotta remind you coronavirus covid19 is not our biggest problem as a matter of fact it's only a byproduct of the real problem the real problem is we are in a world affected by sin and you got to recognize because of the blood of Jesus there are a lot of folk that have already died because of coronavirus but because of the blood of Jesus absent from the body present with the Lord but if there's anybody here listen to me right now if you don't know Jesus if you don't know Jesus if you don't know Jesus 
You ought to be afraid. You ought to be scared. But I can let you know right here, right now, you can be saved. You just got to believe he died for your sin. He was buried for your sin. But early Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. And you can't be saved. But you got to believe. You've got to believe. Not the blood of Exodus, of the Lamb of Exodus 12, but the blood of Jesus is the only one that can cover us, the only one that can free us from the bondage of sin. And so the reality becomes. And if you die knowing Jesus, even if you got corona, he's given you an understanding that you will be delivered from the penalty of sin, which is death. Because God has made the promise to you and I that even though in this life we will die, but it reminds us in Hebrews chapter 9, after death comes the judgment. So brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Mr. and Mrs., wherever you are, wherever you're sitting today, wherever you're standing today, if you haven't trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, we want to let you know today, today is the day to trust him. Today is the day to believe in him. Today is the day to say no to that old life. Lord, forgive me for that old life. Today is the day to say I'm, I'm going to start a new thing based upon a new covenant, based upon new promises, based upon new truths, based upon the reality of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So today, if you haven't trusted him as your Savior, today is a good day to do that. I heard, heard Dr. West say the other day, the reality for us that our lives right now in the palm of God's hands, and it, and it, and it, it is always that way, but right now, it's more prominent than it has ever been. And so today, so today, 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 don't harden your heart. Today, don't say no to him again. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to God. And you may ask the question, what am I saying yes, yes to, Lee? You're saying yes to the fact that he gave his son, and his son gave his life son lived in such a way that we could see his love and his mercy and his greatness and his kindness and his goodness his son died on a cross his son was buried in a grave his son was resurrected from the dead with all power and with all authority and so today I don't know who you are you may be watching again by way of airwaves I want to say to you that you can literally change the course of your life God will literally change the course of your life today, if you will put your trust, your faith, your confidence, your dependence, Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Not by the blood of the Lamb of Exodus 11, but by the blood of the Lamb, John chapter 1. Jesus is the Lamb of God that he gave for the sins of the world. Perhaps again you say, you know, preach, I'm not in a church. And maybe again, just by way of the airways, we want to let you know that you can be a part of our church family even today. Trust Jesus as your Savior. You say, you know, I know I need to be in a church. I'm not talking about those of you that are already in a church. I'm talking about if you're not in a church. If you haven't been saved, but you got saved today, you may have some questions. Here is what I want to encourage you to do. You can call the church office. Leave a message for us and we'll get back with you. The number to call is 713-672-9847. And let, let the person who, that you ultimately will hear from you, let them know, I listened to the program and I've trusted Christ as my Savior and my desire is to become a member of the Good Shepherd Church. Just want to let you know we'll accept you. By way of phone, we'll give you a phone call and, and welcome you to our church family. I'm not talking to anybody already in the church. If you're in a church, stay at your church, please. But if you're not a part of a church family, we would love for you to be a part of our church family. Right now, right now today, you can come.
Father, how we love you. Thank you again. For Jesus, who participated in the Last Supper, but who put into practice the Lord's Supper as the eternal covenant that we have with him that says if we we'll ever be absent from the body, we will be present with the Lord. And we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all who agreed said amen. 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 I would now that we will prepare ourselves for the Lord's table. For those of you that are at home, just, just get things ready, if you will, please. Start making preparation to set things up as you would desire to do so. And what we're going to do here, we again, we're trying to do as much as we can to practice social distancing, and I believe we're doing a good job with that. I'm going to ask uh, when we uh, give the offer that each of us would just come individually to the table and uh, pick up the elements and just go back to your place. And then once you have gone to your place, then we're going to, uh, to share the presentation that we, uh, that we normally do. Father, how we love you and thank you just for this opportunity to share in the Lord's table at this time. You said for us to do it in remembrance of you until you come again, until you send your son again. Father, thank you for allowing us to exercise that privilege of partaking of the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God, help us again to always be mindful of the fact that we don't want to drink it in an unworthy manner. God, even in this climate, somebody that may be angry with somebody else, I pray that you would touch their heart right now and help them to see that life is so brief that we can't take a chance. We don't want to even take a chance of living life with grudges and living life with unforgiveness in our hearts and to partake of the body and the blood in an unworthy manner. So thank you for this opportunity. We know it's already blessed, and we thank you for the blessing. In Christ's name we pray. For his sake we pray it. Amen. Before you take it, just going to ask again that you all would come uh, individually past, if you would just be the first one for us, if you will. We've got two different ways that we're doing it. There are the um, those that are self-prepared, but then we do have, uh, and it's been guarded with clean hands, um, no defects that are there. So if anybody chooses to use it by way of the tray, you certainly feel free to do so. Please feel free to do so. We're just coming individually to partake. Coming one by one to partake. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. That's it. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, brothers. That's it, that's it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Excellent. All right. Every, all the rest of these guys went with new school. I'm still going to go old school. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he blessed it. He gave the Father thanks for it, and he said, this is my body, the bread. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat all of it, and they all ate. So it says, after the supper, he took the cup says, this is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. As Paul reminds us where there is no shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. And he says to us, take and drink all of it, and they all drank. And Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Oh, and we just like to sing a little song. I know it was the blood that saved me. And so right where you are, just be reminded of that. 
continue to keep your faith, your trust, your confidence in God. Won't, right where you are, would you give God a hand praise again for his greatness and his goodness and his kindness toward us. I am so appreciative again for you and for how you've allowed uh, the Lord to allow to use you on this day to, uh, to celebrate this great day that the Lord has given us. Right now it's time uh, for us to, um, to share in the offering. Um, those of you that do it online and the like, would that you would just get ready. Uh, those things that you normally do, go ahead and make preparation for it. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about it right now. Yeah? Uh, go ahead and make preparation for it. We're going to get ready for that uh, quite shortly. And once that is done, hey, you don't have to worry about it right now. Thank you. Uh, once that is done, uh, we're going to move forward in our announcements. And then uh, we're going to take about a, a five-minute break. Um, and then right after that, we'll come back for our Sunday school time, uh, just for a time of refreshing, a time for us to stay engaged and stay connected in the word of God. Father, thank you for allowing us the privilege of being able to share in the Lord's table, allowing us again to remember his death until he comes again. And then, Lord, allowing us to present our gifts to you. It's clear to us that whatever we have to give is because you gave it. And we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor, for you are absolutely worthy. It's in Christ's name we pray, and for his sake we pray it. Amen. Just a, a couple of announcements, just, just as a reminder, our, still our Bible study, uh, 1130 on Wednesday morning. We're going to look again at 7 o'clock. I will let you know, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Those are the things that we're doing currently right now. Uh, we know that... Um, they're talking about this week kind of being an exceptional week uh, as it relates to the virus. And so um, there might be some things that we do that will just say that we're going we're gonna to stay safe as, as, as much as possible. And I want to encourage everybody to keep doing that, please, ma'am, please, sir. And so keep that in mind uh, going forward. The other thing I want to say, if there are any of you, any of our members, any of our members in particular, again, uh, the Bible tells us we do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. Since it's the Good Shepherd Church, we're talking about our members first. Now, we're not excluding anybody else that we, we believe in helping people, but to our members. If you are facing the hardship of the loss of a job, uh, possibly furlough and the like, please let your deacon know what you're experiencing. Let them know what's going on um, because um, uh, I would encourage us, we get a chance this week to read Acts chapter 4. One of the things that the church did is that they saw about one another. And so as members of the Good Shepherd Church, uh, God has a mandate for us, and I think it's a season for us, uh, because what we don't want to do, I don't, what I don't want to be guilty of as a pastor is asking you to give money, and, um, and you're facing hardships. Amen? So we, we want you to know we're concerned about you. And so there are some ways that I believe God is going to give us some ways that we can help one another through through this situation that we're currently going through. Amen? So please keep that in mind. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, going forward. Some of you did receive the program by way of uh, email. Uh, but if you give me just one power clap for our happy birthday to Marcus Denton, Alexis Denton, Edolia Marshall, Ramel Ellison, and Lady Karen Johnson. Come on, let's give them a hand. Praise. Congratulations to each and every one of you. And two years now, Sean and April Aguilard. Congratulations, Sean and April, again, for two years of, of marriage. God bless you. Listen, until we meet again, may the Lord bless us richly. May you keep us in your perfect peace with our minds always stayed on you. God, help us to love each other as you commanded us to love each other, to be concerned about one another, not just because of this virus, but because you've already given us victory in Jesus, and we want to be obedient to your word, to your will, and to your way. So thank you, Father, for Pastor Johnson. Thank you for the singing presentation on today. Thank you for Richard, for Kenneth, for Damon, for Warren, for Zacchaeus. Stefan, for Pastor Johnson, thank you for allowing us to be able to serve your people in this capacity on today. Now to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think, 
You alone who is the only wise God who has dominion and power. You got it now and you have it forever. And all who agree it said, amen. Don't forget, if you have an envelope, some of you have come by the church. Some of you have called your deacon. Let's still exercise that. Call your deacon. Uh, and he's going to make arrangements to make sure that somebody gets those envelopes for you. Uh, right now, give, give me a time, guys. It's 9, it's 10, 10, 15. We're going to say at 10, 21, 10, 21, going to ask you to come back and we're going to start our Sunday school uh, for uh, a time of refreshing. Until we meet again, God bless you. I love you. Stay